Pokemon X and Y, perhaps my favourite games of them all. Most of you may know Iris from the games Black 2 and White 2 as a Dragon type champion. Perhaps a lot of you may remember her in her Axew from the TV show. Today we want to figure out if we can beat Pokemon X as Iris. Our team for these games are going to be based off the TV show though and not her champion team. We can't make it too easy for ourselves now can we? And we will include some rules to make these a little bit more challenging. They should be on the screen right about now and I'll include them in the description. Let's head back to Kalos. So our run starts off fantastic as we're attacked in our sleep by a Fletchling. How lovely. We get changed into our outfit and we head downstairs. After speaking to our mum, she lets us know that the neighbours are waiting outside. As we head outside, they're just standing there waiting. Which is kind of creepy, we were literally asleep a few minutes ago. Anyhow, they introduce themselves as Caleb and Shauna and tell us that the professor has a task for the five kids. We head through Route 1 and we meet up with a gang. We meet Tierno and Trevor too. They ask us for our nickname, Um. Well, Iris will just do, please. Now we can choose our starter Pokemon. I choose Froakie, who we will never use, and we nickname Axew. And by the power of magic, Axew is now an Axew. We check our little buddy out, and we got pretty lucky. We have an adamant nature, so plus attack, minus special attack. And also, the sprite is a shiny, but that's just because it's a lot more HD than the regular model, so we're going to use them. We have our first battle with Shauna, and she has a Fennekin. We exchange pounds and scratches, but eventually we come out on top. We make our way back to deliver the letter to our mum who thought it was a love letter. No mum, it's not. And just like that, she's packed our things and kicks us out and lets us go on an adventure. Raihorn says goodbye and now it's time. So as we are making our way to Santolin Forest, I'd like to talk about our team. We only have a total of five Pokemon we can get, but a lot of them we can't get early. So after the first gym, I'll add someone we can't usually get in the games to our team. Our level cap for the first gym is 12. So we go beat down on all the trainers in the forest and outside which mainly consists of youngsters and preschoolers. I don't feel bad at all. We need the XP and we grind up Axew. After beating the roller skater, we can then get some of our own. And now we can challenge the Santaloon gym. Axew is level 12 and after risking our lives by walking on a spider web, we fight Viola. She's a bug type gym leader, so let's give it a shot. Her lead is Sir Squirt and we lead off with our only Pokemon, Axew. She hits a resisted bubble that does nothing to our little dragon. And I forgot to turn back on animations as I was grinding. Luckily, we have Dragon rage now we just straight up one hit kills it now is a race vivalon it outspeeds us and infestations for good damage as it critical hits and our dragon rage brings it to the red after infestation we're on only 13 hp we probably can't take another attack Luckily, Viola uses a potion, so one more Dragon Rage and we claim our first badge. Now we can add another member to our team, Drillba, which I nicknamed Ground Mole. We have a hardy nature, so it's neutral. It's not bad attack and not bad speed either. This Pokemon is definitely going to come in handy for the second gym. Our level cap for the next gym is 25, and there's quite a bit of filler to do, so our first stop is Lumino City. If we head to the professor's lab, we can meet him. Here he just lets us all mess up his lab by challenging us to a battle. He uses Generation 1 starters and his Pokemon lead is Bulbasaur. A dual chop though from our powerful Axew is no match for him, and he falls. Second is Squirtle. We outspeed and critical hit our first attack of our dual chop. This seals his fate, and down goes Squirtle the turtle. This leaves only Charmander left but we are just way too strong at this level and Axew destroys the professor. Now he offers us all a Pokemon. I choose Charmander and we nickname it Boxed because that's where it'll stay for eternity. He gives us a Megastone, we'll never use that either and on our way out we see a big tall red haired dude who tells us his desire is for a more beautiful world. This guy is definitely not giving off bad guy vibes at all. As we leave towards our next town, we're ambushed by a random Lucario who just stands staring at us. We meet Karina then, who's a gym leader, and she just skates off. Lucario gives us a final stare off before disappearing. Next is a battle with Tierno. He's only got a core fish though, and Axew makes super quick work of it with just a dual chop. A pretty disappointing battle, but we all start somewhere. Don't worry, Tierno. Now we find a sleeping Snorlax on the bridge, and I love this route. I used to hatch so many eggs here back in the day with Masuda Method hunting for shinies. We head to the Parfum Palace, I might have said that wrong, and then we are absolutely ripped off by the butler. He takes a thousand Pokey dollars off us just to enter. The pure cheek, I guess it's just how the rich get rich. So anyways, after what feels like an embarrassing amount of time it took me to figure out how to corner Furfru, we eventually reunite him with his owner. He then puts on a firework display in the middle of the day because that's what normal people do, and me and Shauna have a moment. We get the Pokey Flute from him, and now we can go and wake Snorlax up. The Karate Dude plays the 
Pokey Flute and Snorlax wakes up and attacks us. I could try and run, but I want the XP. So Axial's Jewel Chop does a solid amount to him, to be fair. But Snorlax Tackle is doing big damage back to us. We attack again, and this activates his Berry. And he goes for a Defense Curl to raise his defense. Luckily for our little Dragon Friend, we have Dragon Rage that does a set amount of damage. So Axial takes down Snorlax, and now we can progress further. We have a double rival battle now with me and Kaylin versus Tierno and Trevor. They lead off with Pikachu and Corphish, and I send out Axew, and Kaylin sends out Fletchling. Turn 1, Fletchling pets Corphish for basically nothing as Thundershock smashes Fletchling for half. Our Jewel Trap brings Corphish low before a Vice Script puts Fletchling on only 7 HP. The next turn, we Jewel Trap the Pikachu, hoping Fletchling takes out Corphish, but it just does nothing, and Pikachu kills Fletchling. We hit Pikachu but get paralyzed because of Corphish we do, and our Jewel Chop brings Pikachu to the red, as Corphish's Vice Grip hits us for a little amount of damage. Kalim sends out his Quilladin now, and Pikachu does a little to us with Quick Attack. Quilladin finishes off Corphish with a Vine Wit, and we take down Pikachu with a Dragon Rage. This leaves the last Pokemon, Flabebe. Not wanting Axew to die, I swap into Ground Mole for some Spotlight time. Quilladin Vine Whips for close to half, as he goes for a Fairy Wind. That probably would have KO'd Axew, but we take it like a champ. The next turn, we are the faster Pokemon on field and we take down the little fairy with a super effective metal claw. Now we can head to Ambret Town, and we get told to go to Glittering Cave. To get there, we get to ride on a Rhyhorn and destroy boulders. Mum would be so proud. Here we get our first encounter with this region's team, Team Flare. We have a double battle with Kalem, and they have a Krogunk and a Scraggy, and we have Axew and Esper. I go for a dual trap on Krogunk, and we do just over half. Esper just sets up a light screen, which is useless here, and Krogunk goes for a taunt. Scraggy goes for a brick break, which nearly takes down our little dragon, so the next turn we swap into our ground mole. Esper light screens again now and Krogon poison stings him and Scraggy faint attacks bringing Esper low. Turn 3 we take down Krogon with a metal claw and Esper covets Scraggy for nothing. Scraggy takes down Esper with another dark move and this thing has moxie so its attack is now raised. Absol is Kalem's next Pokemon and it lays lowering his defense as our metal claw doesn't do too much. Scraggy brick breaks Absol taking it down with one attack and now putting it at our plus 2. If this thing was fast we're all doomed. Thanks to the defense drop, our Metal Claw puts it a little bit lower and Quilladin finishes it off with a pin missile. Damn, that could have been a nasty battle. So with all that taken care of, we arrive at Selage City. Here we get told we could have had a bike if we was just one customer before, but if we answer a question, if bikes come more in colours, he gives us one and we take the yellow bike. Now, let's finally challenge our second gym. Grant is a rock type gym and he has a Tyrant and an Amora, which has the ability Refrigerate that can just destroy our team. So let's give it a shot. Our lead is Axew and his lead is Amora. We outspeed and our Jewel Chop does over half as he misses his takedown, which thanks to his ability would have been an Ice type and Axew would have just fell over for sure. So the next turn, we take down the little Ice Dinosaur with a final Jewel Chop. Now it's time for Tyrant and it's a Dragon type too. We outspeed and our Axew lands a critical hit on the first attack, so that seals a little T-Rex's fate, and we take down Grant very easily. That could have been a very difficult fight, but I'll take a little bit of RNG. On our way to the next town, Geosenge Town, we can add another Pokemon to our team now, Amolga. We catch it first try and we check out its stats. It has a brave nature, so that's minus speed plus attack. Not a great nature for him, but what can you do? This now adds a ground resistance to our team now and a flying type, which is always a good thing when our next gym leader is coming up. So we grind up Amolga on all the trainers and Team Flare members and none of them gave us any trouble at all. We arrive at Geosenge Town and follow a Team Flare member as he's waffling on about some stone. Callum basically calls us a liar and we keep progressing. Karina challenges us to a battle with her two Lucarios. The first one's not a problem at all for our Amolga and we take it down with still roughly half of our HP left. The second one though is an issue. It goes for a power up punch first doing little damage but raising its attack by one stage as our shockwave does about 25%. Now Lucario sword stands putting out a huge plus three attack. Our shockwave brings him below half. Lucario then goes for a faint attack putting us on eight HP and I nuzzle it. It does nothing but we get the paralysis so that means we'll outspeed. Faint is a priority move though and it takes down Amolga the next turn. Now we send out Axew. With the paralysis we can outspeed and Dragon Rage to finish it off. This Lucario could have probably swept me. I'm glad we've got Amolga now. The next stop on our journey is Shallow City. We've grinded up our team in the cave on the trainers and wild Pokemon. Now we can go to the Tower of Mastery and here we fight Kalem again to see who will be able to use Mega Evolution. Kalem's 
weed is meow stick and we lead off with Emolga. At level 30 we've got acrobatics, it's more powerful without items and luckily we don't use items in this run. Meow stick fakes us out and we don't attack. The next turn he disarming voices for a little damage as our acrobatics does over half. Then he hits a side beam bringing us to only 25 HP before one more acrobatics takes him down. Next up is Absol. We outspeed and acrobatics does a massive chunk before a bite takes down our Emolga. Now we send out Axew. We outspeed again and finish him off with a Dragon Claw. This leaves his last Pokemon Quilladin. We hit a Dragon Claw for a decent chunk as his Needle Arm does nothing to us. We critical hit our next Dragon Claw taking down Quilladin and beating our rival. With that taken care of we can immediately head to the gym and challenge Karina. While battling the trainers inside the gym, Ground Mole evolves into Excadrill giving us our first of old Pokemon of the run and a really strong one too. The Shalor City gym leader is Karina. She's a fighting type gym leader and leads off with Mindfu. We have the perfect answer to this with Emolga. Mindfu goes for a fake out, flinching us, but the next turn we can just acrobatics and we destroy Mindfu in just one attack. We have a plus attack nature and no item, so acrobatics is really powerful. Machoke is second and suffers the exact same fate as Mindfu and goes down to a single acrobatics. This leaves her with only one Pokemon left, Holucha. He outspeeds us, but his flying press does nothing to us, and our acrobatics just misses out on the knockout and brings him to a sliver. Karina hyper potions, but we are just doing way too much damage for it to be of any use. She heals again and we just keep attacking with acrobatics. Eventually Holucha goes for a home clause and that seals his fate as Emolga sweeps through Karina with no problems at all. Now we receive our third badge of the game. She tells us she wants to fight us at the top of the Mega Evolution Tower now so that's where we head. Karina's Lucario decides to abandon her trainer and fight for us. Honestly I don't blame him. Both of us Mega Evolve and our Bone Rush does over half to him. Her Lucario then power up punch is critical hitting and one hit KO in our Lucario. With that done she asks if I'll take Lucario with me. After that performance there's not a chance and we decline, turn our backs and leave with no hesitation. The game's pacing changes a lot now. Straight after that we go for a few short routes and we're already ready for our next gym battle. Before we can do that though we have another rival battle with Kalim. I forgot to box my HM Pokemon here but we're not going to be using it. We lead off with Axew and his lead is Meowstic. We have Dragon dance now so Meowstic raises a special defense with light screen as we raise our attack and speed. Now we outspeed and we hit a dragon claw for over half as Meowstic hits a side beam and confuses us because it would not be a pokey hand run without being confused one way or another. Luckily the next turn we break through to take it down with a dragon claw. Absol is next and thankfully we break through our confusion again and hit a dragon claw for close to a one hit knockout but a bite finishes off our little dragon. Now we can go into ground mole. We outspeed Absol and hit a metal claw to finish it off. Lastly is Quilladin. Our metal claw doesn't do too much as neither does he to us. So after exchanging the same moves over and over, we are in the red, but we can take him down with a final metal claw, beating our rival again. So now our level cap is only 34, two levels higher, but we have the grass gym leader, Ramos. We have a flying type and acrobatic, so I'm expecting this to be an easy gym battle. So Ramos's lead is a Jump Pluff, and our lead is of course Molga. Jump Pluff outspeeds us and sets up a Leech Seed that will chip away at us and restore HP to them, but one Acrobatics obliterates him and down goes Pokemon number one. Next he brings out his ace, Gogo. We hit an Acrobatics that takes him to a sliver of health and he hits a takedown for nearly half. We paralyze him thanks to our ability Static, but the recoil isn't enough to take him down, so he gets a little bit of HP back from Leech Seed and Ramos will heal the next turn. We exchange the same moves as Ramos heals him up again and we're slowly getting low from leech seed damage but eventually Ramos runs out of potions and we can take down Gogo with only 14 HP remaining. His third and last Pokemon is only a Weeping Bell though and just like every Pokemon before it that dare stand to Emolga they are soon punished by an Acrobatics and fall. With that we defeat Ramos and earn our fourth gym badge, the Sprout Badge. Now we can add a fourth member to our team who is always going to stay at his first stage and that Pokemon is Gibble. Our Pokemon are slowly now becoming behind the power curve. So I call our Gibble Chomp and it has a quirky nature which is neutral. Not the best but not the worst and it will never evolve so I give it an Everstone so after every level I don't have to stop it. So now we have a bit of Team Flare story to do. Honestly every fight was super easy as Team Flare are weak to Ground Mole and Chomp so we finally reached the Team Flare admin. Honestly these guys are super easy to 
two, they have one Pokemon. The admin has a Mighty Enna, which has Intimidate, so it lowers Chomp's attack. Then goes for a Swagger, a move that raises our attack but confuses us, of course. But we break through and hit a Dragon Claw for half. The next turn, we outspeed, break through our confusion, and we Dragon Claw Mighty Enna for a very easy Team Flare Art. With them beat, we turn on the power back to Lumino City, and now we can go challenge the gym. On the way there, we see a giant man who talks about a flower Pokemon. It's a bit creepy, but we move on. So now, after doing a little gym puzzle, we can challenge the Lumino City gym, and the leader is Clement. He specializes in electric types, which sucks for him because we've got Ground Mole. We wall his entire team. So a Mulga, and he lives a Rock Slide on 1 HP, and hits a weak Aerial Ace. Now I set up a Home Claws, while Clement goes for the full restore, raising our attack and accuracy. Now we can take out the Emolga in just one super effective rock slide. Heliolis, Clement's ace, comes out second. It hits a super weak quick attack and one boosted earthquake swallows him up and down he goes. Third and last is Magneton. We outspeed an earthquake as he just sets up the electric terrain, boosting electric moves, but it's pretty much useless. He has the ability sturdy, so we can't one hit knock it out. Clement heals it again and we just bring Magneton straight back down to 1 HP. With a final shake of the earth, we defeat Magneton and in turn be our fifth gym. This now gives us the Voltage Badge. We head on down to Route 14 now and Caleb challenges us to another battle. His usual lead is Meow Stick and we have Grand Mole still. He fakes us out causing Grand Mole to flinch. The following turn we Earthquake for a massive chunk of damage as his Psychic barely does a thing. So turn 3 with one more Earthquake we can take down Meow Stick. Second is his fully evolved starter Chestnut. We can't really hurt it that much so I go for a Metal Claw just to get off a little bit of damage as his bite does a good amount to us. Turn 2 we miss another Metal Claw and Bite puts us in the red. Then we miss yet another Metal Claw and Chestnut finishes us off with a Seed Bomb. Now we have the perfect answer to him though, Emolga. One super effective Acrobatic destroys him for an easy knockout. This just leaves his last Pokemon, Absol. And Acrobatics doesn't quite take him out and we take half from a Bite. One more Acrobatics though and down goes Absol giving us yet another easy battle over our rival. With him B, Axew wants to evolve but Iris never had a fright that we know of, so it's going to stay in Axew until we can get Haxorus, so he's going to hold an Everstone for the foreseeable future. On our way to the next gym, we stop off at a creepy house, and a guy there tells us a story about how if you're not subscribed yet, you definitely should for more Pokemon content. Now let's go on to the gym battle. So here we have the leader, which is Valerie, and she's a fairy type gym. After getting lost, teleporting many times, come on, you know you definitely did too, we face her. Her lead is Mawile, and we lead off with Excadrill. It doesn't have Intimidate, so one stab earthquake demolishes Mawile, and that's an easy first knockout. We learn Swords Dance now, which is fantastic, and to be honest, Excadrill walls this team too. Mr. Mime is next, and I go for a Metal Claw, and he dodges it, and sets up a Reflect, boosting the team's defense. The next turn, we set up a Swords Dance to put us at a plus two attack, and Mr. Mime Psychics does nothing to us. Turn three, we hit a Metal Claw for the one hit knockout, even with a Reflect up. Now this leaves her ace, Sylveon. Our boosted Metal Claw is doing half, as he just it's a very weak dazzling gleam. This means Excadrill can Metal Claw again now and sweep Valerie's gym. That means we are now six gyms down and we get the Fairy Badge, but there's plenty more for us to do. Next up is a Pokeball Factory and Shauna and Trevor are being chased by Team Flare as they're up to no good again. I basically sweep through all the grunts again and now it's time for the admin fights. So we still have our Ground Mole as our lead and he has a Scraggy. We outspeed her in a higher level so an Earthquake just demolishes him. Her second Pokemon is my favourite, Houndoom. Unfortunately, though we destroy it in one move as well sorry buddy then we have a double battle versus the other two admins with Kaelin. Minetric hits a weak bite on ground mole then he proceeds to hit an earthquake destroying both pokemon and meow state tanks it reasonably well that was an easy fight too honestly we are a little bit of a higher level here and we just deal with team flare so easy with our team let's move on so before we challenge any more gyms we get told that something might be happening in frost cavern so we rollerblade our way down there to check it out turns out team flare are bullying an obama snow how typical of them. So we send out Chomp versus a Houndoom. He uses Embargo, a move that prevents you using items, but the joke's on him, I don't use items anyway. We dig underground and then the dig connects to nearly take out Houndoom. The next turn he hits a foul play for a solid chunk of our HP and we take him out with a Dragon Claw. So Team Flare flee, leaving a Bomber Snow to be all happy in his ice home. Trevor says he's scared of battling and then runs off to collect more Pokemon and if we talk to a Bomber Snow he gives us a Mega Stone. Not that we're going to be using it, but let's head to the next gym. We we ride on Mamoswine through the thick snow, destroying boulders, until we arrive at our next town, Anister. Before we can challenge the leader though, Kalen wants yet another battle. I guess he's still not learnt his lesson. So his lead is still Meow 
stick and we lead off with a Mulga. He fakes us out as per usual and then obviously we flinch. The next turn though his sidekick does incredible damage to us as our acrobatics does just over half. He then goes for a disarming voice this time and Amolga lives it on only 11 HP and takes down Meow Stick with a final acrobatics. Vaporeo is his newest member to the team and it makes short work of Amolga with a quick attack. But in a last defiant act, we paralyze him thanks to the static ability. I go into Axe U now and set up a Dragon Dance, boosting our attack and our speed, but this was a mistake. We are frail and an Aurora Beam just straight up knocks Axe U out. We're in a bit of a predicament now. I go into Ground Mole and set up a Swords Dance, raising our attack by two stages as he just hits a weak Aurora Beam for some reason. We Swords Dance again to get to a plus 4 attack and he goes for a Muddy Water and misses thankfully. Now with a massively boosted Earthquake, we take it down in just one attack. Next up is Chestnut. Our Metal Claw, even at plus 4, doesn't do enough to take it out and he hits a Brit Break to take us to only 5 HP. Thankfully, with one more attack, we take down the beast that is Chestnut. Now is Absol. It's a lot frailer than Chestnut and a Metal Claw takes him down, giving us a victory over our rival, who's definitely getting harder to beat. With the rival not blocking our way anymore, we can challenge the leader of the Anastar Gym. It's Olympia and she specializes in psychic types. Her lead is the flying psychic type Sigilyph and we lead off with a Molga. He immediately sets up a reflect boosting his team's defense, so our spark practically does nothing to him. The next turn a psychic destroys our HP and lowers our special defense, but we have a special attack in Thunderbolt, so we bypass the defense boost and take down Sigilyph. Now is Slow King. We hit a Thunderbolt for over half as a power gem claims a Molga and down he goes. Next up we send out our Axew. We do a little damage with a Dragon Claw before he goes for a Yawn. Not wanting to fall asleep, I swap into Ground Mole as yet he goes for another Yawn. At this point, I think he's not going to attack again, so I just go for an Earthquake to take out Slow King. Her final Pokemon and her Ace is Meow Stick. We fall asleep thanks to the Yawn and Meow Stick goes for a Fake Out and we stay asleep. The next turn she sets up a Calm Mind, boosting her Special Attack and her Special Defense by one stage. We don't wake up again. The following in turn she goes for yet another calm mind and I'm getting pretty scared. Thankfully we wake up and hit an earthquake for about 70%. The next turn she shadow balls, it critical hits and lowers our special defense. But one more shake of the earth from our ground mole and we defeat Olympia and get our 7th gym badge, the psychic badge. As we leave the gym we get a notification on a holo caster, it's Lysandre and he's threatening to blow up the world basically and if we're not in team flare it's adio to us. I guess it's time we go and put a stop to team flare once and for all. I've picked up a few red candies we found on our travels and we can finally level Axew up to level 48 so it evolves into Fracture then to 49 where we finally have a powerful dragon type in Haxorus. I forgot how fast we fight Lysandre after everything happened so I didn't turn back on animations here but anyways our Haxorus has took a little bit of damage from the fights before it. We set up a dragon dance to boost our speed and attack as we take huge damage from a high jump kick. The next turn we can de deal with Mayanfu with a single dragon claw. Gyarados is next and it has Intimidate negating our attack boost. I hit a rock tomb for over half and he hits an outrage to take down Axew. Now we can go into a Molga and we immediately revenge kill the Gyarados with a spark. His first Pokemon is Pyro. We take a fire blast to 52 HP and we hit an acrobatics to nearly half. A Molga dodges the next fire blast thankfully and we take down Pyro with one more acrobatics. This leaves his last Pokemon Murkrow but a Molga is a beast and a super effective spark defeats it and with that we beat our first Lysandre fight. I made the level cap now for 53 up until the last Lysandre battle. Now Axew sweeps through the whole of Team Flare. We see Lysandre has imprisoned the big guy we saw back in the desert and then we get a backstory. It shows basically his Pokemon died and he wanted to do everything he could to bring it back and that is how the ultimate weapon was born. I can't believe though they never get, gave out this Floet. It was such a shame at the time. Lysandre now tells us if we win we can decide what to do with it. So we fight Ex Exoro Sick. I think that's how you say it. His lead is Crobat and we lead with our Haxorus. We hit a Rock Tomb for a great amount of damage and we lower his speed as his cross poison does very little to us. One more rock tomb and we defeat his first Pokemon Crobat. His second Pokemon is Malamar. We outspeed and hit a Dragon Claw doing over half to him as he goes for a superpower. It does a big chunk with a critical hit and thanks to its ability it raises its defense and attack. One more Dragon Claw though from our dragon and we take it down defeating him with no issues. Now we press the blue button to deactivate the ultimate weapon but Exorosic activates it anyways. Fantastic. We can see that it's basically destroyed Geocentre Town apart from one house that seems to not be affected by it all. So now we know where our next stop is. After heading to the Team Flare HQ and meeting up with Kalim, we confront Lysandre, who's crying over the fact he's about to commit a mass atrocity and make sure Pokemon go extinct. He then challenges us again. This time his Pokemon
Pokemon have evolved and he leads off with Mindfu. We lead off with Haxorus, but I didn't heal and I didn't box my Flyer, I'm sorry about that. Regardless, we one hit knock out Mindfu with a Dragon Claw. Gyarados comes out and lowers our attack again with Intimidate, so we swap into a Molga. Gyarados' Outrage does a huge amount to us too. The next turn we're faster and Gyarados is four times weak to electric type attack, so one spark takes care of him. Third is Pyro. He's faster than our Molga thanks to our nature and takes us out with a single Fire Blast. Now we send in our little buddy Chomp. We don't take a Hyper Voice well at all and we dig underground. The next turn our dig then does a solid 50% to him. Chomp now succumbs to another Hyper Voice but now we swap into Ground Mole. We outspeed Pyro and an Earthquake finishes off the Lion. This leaves his last Pokemon, the Evolved Murkrow, Honchkrow. Our Rock Slide takes him all the way to the red as his Night Slash does nearly half to us. With one more Rock Slide, Ground Mole picks up another knockout and we defeat Lissandre again. We fight an army of grunts on the way down, but me and Caelan destroy them all, so there's not a problem. And now the legendary Pokemon Xerneas wakes up and comes out of a tree-like state and stares us down and challenges us to a battle. But with a quick and easy Master Ball we got from the Pokeball factory, we capture it. Now because having Xerneas on my team is cheating, I let Lissandre defeat all of my Pokemon so we can put it in the box. Our last battle now versus a Team Flare boss Lysandre. He leads with my Anshao and we lead off with Haxorus. We set up a Dragon Dance raising our attack and speed by one stage as he hits a high jump kick that does a massive amount of damage to us. Turn 2 we hit a Dragon Claw that does enough damage for the one hit knockout. Pyro is his second Pokemon and it suffers the same fate that my own Fu did and goes down to one Dragon Claw too. Honchkrow is his third Pokemon and once again Haxorus shows his dominance and takes down Honchkrow with ease. Now is his ace Gyarados. It intimidates putting us back on a neutral attack. Gyarados then proceeds to Mega Evolve but we're still faster and I went for a Grass Knot forgetting it's special so it doesn't do too much damage and Gyarados takes us down with an Outrage. We send out a Molga next and fire off a Thunderbolt but we're not doing enough to him and his Outrage critical hits taking us down but as a last act again we paralyze him thanks to the ability Static and he's now confused. It's Chomp's time to shine now. We hit a Dragon Claw to bring him to a sliver as he gets fully paralyzed and can't attack. With a final blow, Chomp defeats Gyarados in our final Team Flare battle. Lysandre really didn't like losing and decides he's going to blow us all up. Fantastic. We leave immediately and he activates the ultimate weapon, destroying only himself and the base. With that spectacular show done, we can now get back to our journey. We only have one more gym badge let's to do, so let's head there. As we're heading to our last gym, Professor a Sycamore challenge us to a battle too. He now uses the Kanto starters that are fully evolved. His lead is Venusaur and we lead off with our Haxorus. We set up a Dragon Dance turn 1 to boost our attack and speed and his Petal Blizzard is really doing nothing to us. So turn 2 I set up one more Dragon Dance to put us at a plus 2 attack as his Petal Dance does a little bit more this time. Now we can let loose so we hit a Dragon Claw that deals with Venusaur in just one attack. Second is Blastoise. We go for another Dragon Claw and it's too much for Blastoise to handle and he falls down as well. Last but not least is Charizard. We have a rock move and at a plus two attack, there is no way he lives. So a rock tomb destroys Charizard, giving us an easy victory over Professor Sycamore. We now have a gauntlet with our rivals from the start. First up is Shauna and she leads off with a Delcatty. I choose to Dragon Dance turn one to set up and hopefully sweep her team, but she goes for a charm, harshly lowering our attack. Now I just attack with a Dragon Claw and we still do a huge amount and she charms again, so annoying. Luckily our next Dragon Claw just does enough to take down this annoying cat. Now out comes Gudra. The dragon move is definitely coming and our attack is ruined, so I swap into Excadrill. We take a dragon pulse reasonably well on the switch in. Now we hit an earthquake, but Gudra is pretty bulky, so it survives and earthquakes us too. Ground Mole holds on though in the red. The next turn, we finish it off with a Metal Claw and we get the attack raise perfect. Shauna's last Pokemon is a starter, Delphox. With a boosted earthquake, it has no chance of living and the ground swallows up the fox, giving us our first rival win of the gauntlet. Next is Tierno. His lead is Talonflame and we still lead with Haxorus. We outspeed and a super effective Rock Tomb obliterates Talonflame for an easy knockout. Second is Crawdon. We hit a Dragon Claw for over half and his Night Slash does close to half too. One more Dragon Claw the next turn though and we pick up our second knockout. Third is Roserade. It's pretty frail defensively though so a Dragon Claw from Haxorus gives us our second rival win. Last but not least is Trevor. His first Pokemon is a Raichu and we hit a Dragon Claw for the one hit knockout but Raichu static paralyzes us. His next Pokemon is Florgius and we have to swap. Luckily Ground Mole complements our dragon super well and we eat a Moon Blast on the swap. Now we can hit a super effective Metal Claw that doesn't quite do enough to take out Florgius and she sets up a Misty Terrain. The following turn we can take down Florgius with another Metal 
Metal Claw. Last is Aerodactyl. He goes for a Supersonic to confuse us, because of course he does, and we hit ourselves. Wondering if a ground move is coming, I swap into a Molga, but he goes for a Crunch instead. Aerodactyl is faster now, and an Ancient Power nearly takes us out, as the Spark returns the favour and puts him in the red too. Now I swap into Chomp on the incoming Ancient Power, and it doesn't do too much to our little guy. Aerodactyl decides to be annoying and Supersonics us again, and we hit ourselves again. Now Aerodactyl picks up our little chomp and takes him to the sky. He hits the sky drop next turn, nearly taking us out, and we hit ourselves again. Honestly, my luck with confusions. Now Aerodactyl takes out Chomp with another Sky Attack. We go into our Haxorus now, but we're paralysed. Aerodactyl goes for another Supersonic, and now we are paralysed and confused, so obviously we hit ourselves. Aerodactyl then picks up Haxorus, and the next turn uses Sky Drop. We take a little damage from it, but we finally snap out of confusion and take out this annoying Pokemon. That was a pretty annoying fight, to be honest. That ends the rival gauntlet, and now we can finally head to our last gym. The last gym leader for us to take on is Wolfric. He's an ice type gym leader and has the potential to be scary for my team, but I've got an answer slightly in ground mold. Wolfric's lead is a bomber snow, and we lead off with a Molga. He sets up the hail with its ability snow warning, and our first move is an acrobatics. We don't quite do enough damage for the one hit knockout, and an ice beam destroys a Molga. This is actually a blessing though. Wolfric will now heal to full, which means we can go for a sword stance, boosting our attack with ground mold. The next turn we connect to rock slide, and with our now boosted attack, it's an easy one hit knockout. Cryogonol is Wolfric's second Pokemon and his stab boosted Metal Claw is enough to melt the Snowflake and give Ground Mole its second knockout. His third and his ace is Avalug. It's super bulky defensively so it lives a Metal Claw at half but we get another attack boost and it's a good job too as Avalug goes for a curse which raises his defense. So one more Metal Claw and Ground Mole shows how strong he is yet again and we beat our last gym leader Wolfric. We now get our final badge, the Iceberg Badge. We can finally add our last team member to our team if we fish for a very very long time on route 21 we find dragonair and let me tell you this thing was a pain to catch eventually we catch it in an ultra ball and we check out its stats it's another neutral nature and it's hardy and takes plenty of siestas the last stop now for us is victory road we show our badges and the gates lead us to our final path the elite four while growing through victory road our dragonair finally evolves into dragonite giving us a powerful pokemon and a much needed special attacker i spend a bit more time grinding to nearly level 60 on all our Pokemon before our last rival fight and teaching some TMs we've got to our team. Now we have our last rival fight with Kaelin. His usual lead is Meowstic and we lead off with Dragonite. Meowstic goes for a fake out but thanks to our ability we don't flinch and hit a Surf for nearly half. Kaelin then outplays me and swaps to Vaporeon on the incoming Surf and its ability Water Absorb negates that completely. We fire off a Thunderbolt for over half as he hits a massive Aurora Breen bringing us low. One more Thunderbolt from our Dragonite though and Vaporeon falls down. He now sends out Altaria. I expected us to be faster but we're not and he takes down Dragonite with a Dragon Pulse. Now we can unleash a Mulligan though. I go for a Spark and it does a good chunk and we get the Paralysis. Perfect. Altaria just confides lowering our special attack. So the next turn we go for an Acrobatics and we do massive damage and he gets Parahaxed. So one more Acrobatics and down Altaria goes. His next Pokemon is Meowstic again and it flinches us with a Fake Out. The next turn we take a Psychic but don't take it well and we finish off Meowstic with another Acrobatics. Now is Chestnut but it's Grass and Fighting type. So one super effective Stab Acrobatics demolishes him for another Knockout for a Molga. This leaves Kalim's last Pokemon Absol. Unfortunately we don't quite KO it with an Acrobatics so Absol takes out a Molga with a Night Slash. We can then send out our little monster chomp we take a night slash then show our strength by using strength and beating kaelin for the last time in this run so guys we finally made it we're at the elite four here is our team we have dragonite ground mold the excrugil chomp the gibble axu the haxorus and amolga let's do this to start off with, we have Wickstrom, the Steel type Elite Four. The Elite Four only have four Pokemon the first time around, too. So he leads off with Klefki, and we lead off with Ground Mole. Klefki really can't hurt us, so I set up a Sword Stance to boost our attack as Klefki fires off a super weak Flash Cannon. Klefki's Pranksters allows him to set up spikes, but one super effective Earthquake, and down he goes. Next is Probobass. 
I go for an Earthquake, but forget this thing has Sturdy, so we take him to 1 HP, as Probo Pass then hits an Earth Power for a massive chunk of damage. Wickstrom heals here, so I go for a Metal Claw on the off chance we get an attack boost. We don't. One more Earthquake, and we defeat his second Pokemon. Now he has Aegislash. He goes for a King Shield, as we don't lower our attack thanks to Earthquake not physically connecting. The next turn, we take down Aegislash in one more move. Last is Scizor. Even though he's neutral, Ground Mole's Earthquake is way too powerful for him, and we defeat Scizor in giving us our first Elite Four victory. Let's move on to the second. Second is the Fire Type Elite Four, Malva. Her lead is Pyro, and we lead off with Dragonite. Pyro's Hyper Voice does about 25% as our Surf brings him all the way to the red. Now Malva will full restore, and we just Surf again to bring Pyro back down. She full restores again, once more healing Pyro as we pour back in the red. It's a losing battle for her. In her last act, Pyro goes for a Noble Roar, lowering our attack and special attack as Dragonite takes it down with a Surf. Next up is Torkoal, and we've got to switch, so I go into Chomp. Torkoal goes for a Stone Edge on the switch, but Chomp takes it like a champ. Now we outspeed Torkoal and we hit an Earthquake for just close to half as Torkoal retaliates with his own Earthquake doing massive damage. Thankfully Chomp gets a higher roll now and he picks up a knockout on Torkoal. Third is Talonflame. It outspeeds our little guy and Brave Birds taking him down and suffering a little bit of damage in recoil. Now I go back into Dragonite. Talonflame once again goes for a Brave Bird dealing solid damage to us and taking recoil before we fire off a Thunderbolt to take down Talonflame. This leaves his last Pokemon Chandelier. I Stay in and go for a surf, but he outspeeds us and takes down Dragonite with his Shadow Ball. Now we go into our Haxorus though. We are faster and one shake of the earth, swallow Chandelier and defeats our second Elite Four member, Malva. Now it's time to move on to the next. Our third Elite Four member we choose to take on is Shellbold. Probably said that wrong. The Water Type Elite Four. His lead is Clawitzer, and we lead off with our Flying Electric Type Amolga. We are faster than Clawitzer, and we hit a Spark for over half as he hits a Water Pulse that does massive damage to Amolga. One more Spark, and Amolga claims its first knockout. Second is Barbanical. We hit a Thunderbolt that does over half again, but Amolga is too weak, and it goes down to a Razor Shell. So now we send out Dragonite. Our Thunderbolt does enough damage to secure the knockout, and we take down Barbanical. Third up is Gyarados. It has the ability Intimidate, but it doesn't affect us at all. It's actually faster, and a Nice Fang does massive amounts of damage to Dragonite, but being four times weak to Electric, it falls to a single Thunderbolt. This leaves his last Pokemon, Starmie. It hits a Dazzling Gleam to claim Dragonite, and this thing could be a problem right now. I send out Haxorus, and he hits a Dazzling Gleam. I should have Dragon Danced, but I went for a Dragon Claw. We do over half to him. The next turn, Starmie goes for a Dazzling Gleam again, and he takes down Haxorus too. I now go into Ground Mole. As a man of options really. Starmie goes for a Surf and we live it on only 38 HP and can Earthquake to take down the last Pokemon and defeat our third Elite Four member. On to the last. Saving the best for last is Drasna, the Dragon type Elite Four. It's only fitting she's the last one we face. So Drasna leads off with Dragology and we have a great answer to this in our Ground Mole. It's part Poison type and we outspeed so one Earthquake is enough from our powerhouse to take down her first Pokemon. Second she sends out Noivern. He hits a Super Fang which does exactly half to us and we hit a rock slide to bring Noivern to half as well. The next turn Noivern flamethrowers and that takes down our ground mole. Now we send out Amolga. He super fangs again bringing us to half as our spark puts him in the red. Drasna heals Noivern now and our thunderbolt doesn't even do half. Noivern then hits a Dragon Pulse and it's too much for Amolga, and down he goes. Now we misplay. We send out Haxorus and we can't even take one Dragon Pulse, and this is now not looking good at all. We go into Dragonite and Noivern hits a Dragon Pulse that critical hits and puts us on only 2 HP. We then take it down with an Ice Speed. Next up is Altaria. It's 4 times weak to Ice and thankfully we outspeed, so one Ice Beam takes him down. This leaves her last Pokemon, Drudagon. We outspeed again, but an Ice Beam doesn't do enough from Dragonite and he hits a revenge that takes us down. All down to Chomp now, our last hope. We outspeed and the Dragon Claw does just enough to take down Drudagon, making Chomp our champ yet again and saving the day. With that done, we've beat our last Elite Four member. Now it's time for the final battle. Our team is pretty underleveled for this fight, so I get us to around level 66, and this is it, the final battle. Can we beat Pokemon X as Iris? 
Let's find out. Dianthes lead his Horlucha and we lead off with our Dragonite. Horlucha is faster and hits a poison jab, but it does practically nothing to us as one Ice Beam takes down the flying Luchador bird. Next up is Aurorus. I really don't have a switch in, so I stay in and go for a Surf for over half. That means it's Dragonite's time to go down and one Blizzard seals that fate. We can then go into our Ground Mole, being Ice and Rock type means one Earthquake from us takes down the Ice Dinosaur. Her next Pokemon is Gudra, and I might need Ground so I have to switch. We go into a Mulga as Gudra does in fact connect to Focus Blast on the swap. Thankfully, it doesn't do too much. We hit an Acrobatics that does huge damage to Gudra, but a Dragon Pulse puts us on only 16 HP. One more Acrobatics and a Mulga takes down the bulky dragon. Diantha sends out Tyrantrum next, and I stay in and go for an Acrobatics to get a little bit of chip damage off before the T-Rex goes for a head smash and takes us down. I go into Chomp now as I know Tyrantrum is pretty slow, but we're actually slow and the Dragon Claw demolishes our little guy. I now go into our starter, Haxorus. We outspeed and the Dragon Claw takes down the T-Rex, leaving only two Pokemon left. The next is Galgeist. We hit a Dragon Claw and take it to half as it goes for a Phantom Force. This is a perfect opportunity to raise our stats with Dragon Dance, and Galgeist breaks tradition and lands an attack on us for not much damage. With a now boosted Dragon Claw, we can take down Galgeist with one more move. This leaves her last Pokemon, Gardevoir. We are definitely faster now. Diantha Mega Evolves, and we outspeed, we hit an Earthquake, and it does enough damage to take down Gardevoir in a single blow and beat Diantha. Now we can register star ourselves in the Hall of Fame with our amazing team and we've beat Pokemon X as Iris. Honestly, this was a blast to do. I loved these games and it was great to come back to them. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm still pretty new to creating full run playthroughs, so if you have any feedback, good or bad, do let me know in the comments. If you did enjoy it, leave a like and subscribe for more Pokemon content. As always, if you're still watching, thank you. Stay tuned for more videos and I'll see you in the next one.